So this week's topics, first of all, we will talk about foreign net buying in the Malaysian market continues. We will have a look at MIDF's latest fund flow report, which really specifies what local investors and foreign investors are buying right now. Okay, next up, weaker ringgit is an opportunity. Yes, uh, a lot of Malaysians, they are depressed, disappointed about the ringgit approaching its all-time low of 4.74. Okay, but actually, there are different types of opportunities here. There are respective pros and cons, and we'll talk about those. Okay, and finally, we will clarify the Do It Now QR fiasco. Yeah, Paynet, the service provider behind Do It Now, has recently decided to implement additional fees on merchants, and that got quite a lot of netizens mad. Okay, so this and more in our weekly analysis, as usual, not financial or legal advice. And a quick shout out to all our current learners and gatherers, our patrons. Thank you all so much for supporting the Futurists. Allow me to start with Andrew, Wendy, Edward, Alex, Sissy, Iz, Morpheus, Ershad, Caveman, Balls, Kelvin, Kai, Tommy, Jing Kang, Adrian, Eric, JS, Wenyan, Dean, Duhan, Ken, Faris, Alan, Jackson, and Ryzan, as well as all of our learner members. So now on to the first topic of the night. Busa market sees interest from foreign funds. Yeah, they have continued their net buying streak on Busa Malaysia at 550.9 million last week. This is the Malaysian equity market. And you can see this chart over here. The second consecutive week and this week in itself for the week ending 22nd of September. So this is not the most updated data. Uh, the volume is 2.3 times higher than the week prior and the highest net foreign inflow over the past eight weeks. Okay, so it's a lot of positive news for the Malaysian market. Uh, they were net buyers, foreigners, uh, every day last week, registering net purchases of over 100 million per day, except on Thursday. The top three sectors that posted the highest net inflow were utilities, transportation and logistics, and finally, consumer products and services. So we dive deeper into the specific stocks that are acquired by foreigners for the week ending 22nd of September. Uh, what you would see is quite a curious pattern. Uh, top four is YTL Power International, uh, Public Bank, Malaysia Airports, Petronas Dagangan. And they're kind of exchanging hands with local institutions over here because three of the top four stocks that are acquired by foreign investors have been sold by local institutions. Meanwhile, similarly for foreign investors, uh, what they are selling is actually what local institutions are buying as well. So uh, this week in itself, uh, essentially what we're seeing is really just an exchange of hands. But what you got to take note of is the net foreign inflow into the Malaysian market, right? But the Malaysian market itself, if you take a look at the FBM KLCI index, uh, it actually fell 1.8% this week. So why is this the case? Well, I kind of mentioned just now already, uh, MIDF, they take some time to release their report. So it's not the most updated one. It's as of 22nd September. Therefore, for the report that MIDF will be releasing next week, it will cover this week. okay? And uh, we are most likely going to see foreign investors as well as local institutions uh, switching over to the profit-taking side. Okay? So next up, let's have a look at the year-to-date performance of Asian benchmark indices. This is comparing the Malaysian market to the entire or all the other Asian markets out there. Lah. And not bad, okay, we are the fifth worst performer or the eighth best performer, glass half full, glass half empty, depending on how you want to see it. And we are slightly behind Singapore, okay. Uh, previously, two to three months ago, uh, if you were an ardent or if you are an ardent follower of the Futurist, maybe you were in that session, uh, Malaysia was right here. Okay, we were one of the, if not the worst performing markets, we were even behind Thailand. Uh. So fortunately, uh, interest from foreign investors came back and they have acquired quite a lot of equities in this past few weeks in itself. And uh, the Malaysian market has recovered quite significantly since the start of the year. Okay, so that's a bit about uh, MIDF's uh, reports. Now we take a look at the ringgit. Yeah, it continues to disappoint and depreciate. <laughs> Uh, it's the third week since I talked about the ringgit already and I don't want to be too long-winded about this, but uh, the reasons I've covered this already, uh, US inflation spiking back up to 3.7%, just going to keep it short and sweet. Uh, due to this, the US Federal Reserve is forecasting one more interest rate hike 
where previously uh, no more interest rate hikes were expected in the US. Okay, next reason is also China's economic slump. Okay, there's a study done by the IMF which says that a 1% decline in China's GDP will lead to a 0.5% drop uh, in Malaysia's economy. Okay, and finally, yeah, Bank Negara Malaysia, they are expected to hold the OPR steady at 3% for the rest of the year Yeah, because inflation, uh, the most recent one came out at 2.0%. Uh, it's well at the central bank's target goal. So there's really no reason or no urgent reason for Bank Negara Malaysia to uh, raise the OPR in order to defend the ringgit. Okay? And what we are seeing right now is that uh, on Friday in itself, the ringgit fell to 4.7046 right over here, the peak. And it is, on, it is only about 4 cents away from the all-time low in November of 4.74. Okay? So it closed on Friday at 4.6976. But... Uh, there are a lot of people going on to the internet right now and venting their frustrations, blaming the current administration. And there is also an interesting tweet right, by Balabo Bijak, which is one of the uh, prominent uh, influencers in Malaysian finance. Okay, he says that in order for the Malaysian ringgit to strengthen, citizens should spend more. Yeah, he's encouraging you, me and you, everybody, to spend more on the current economy so that inflation will go up. And when inflation goes up, Bank Negara Malaysia will be forced to raise the overnight policy rate and then the ringgit, the Malaysian ringgit will strengthen. Now, surface-wise, a lot of you guys will say that, hey, this is a load of crap, right? Because how can you ask Malaysians to spend more even when the poor don't have enough income, really, right? The, the rich should be doing this. Right? But if you look at it factually, right, it can actually work, but that is only for the short term. Yeah, I've talked about this uh, previously also. If Bank Negara Malaysia, they decide to hike the OPR today, uh, it will only strengthen the ringgit in the short term. Okay, the long-term trajectory needs to come from better government policies. Yeah, politicians, they need to stop campaigning on the ringgit's weakness and use it as their uh, power factor, right? Like uh, the, the, the opposing, the people who are against the current administration, they say that, oh, weak ringgit, okay, current administration is bad. Then the current administration, Administration says that, oh, it's because of the previous administration, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, all this needs to go away. And politicians, they need to focus on more important indicators such as GDP growth. Okay, When our economy outpaces the growth in other emerging markets like our neighbours, say Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, then investors will be willing to come in and that will lead to a stronger ringgit. So well-controlled fiscal position is also essential. Yeah, we must not over-borrow to fund our country's needs, right? And finally, the ringgit must also be highly tradable to encourage foreign investment. So don't put unnecessary restrictions uh, that make it harder for startups and businesses to invest in our country. And this, all these details uh, has been discussed in the, our Twitter space session long ago. Okay, you can listen to the replay. It's on Spotify. Uh, I just summarized the points covered by these two financial experts. Okay. So yeah, uh, weaker ringgit is also an opportunity. Yeah, the bad side of a weaker, weaker ringgit, I'm sure you guys know it uh, very well already, but there are also a lot of good sides over here. First of all, it makes working overseas more attractive. Now, this does not mean you need to change your job immediately, go and work abroad. You can actually... Uh, look for part-time jobs online. There are so many these days. Okay, do a quick Google search. Uh, freelancing services online, you'll be able to find a lot of matches out there. And as long as they pay you in any strong foreign currency, that's entirely fine. Right? Uh, alternati alternatively, you can also approach uh, small to medium social media pages because those big pages, right? technically, they don't really look at their DMs. Right? So you approach uh, those small to medium ones and then you offer your services to them. So let's say you know how to use Canva, you know how to redesign posts, or perhaps you know a bit about finance, you want to help people copyright. Right? So just approach these pages. You may not know, right? They need people to work for them and they may offer you a very good rate. Okay? And it is also a telltale sign that diversification is important. Yeah, so we've been talking about how crucial diversification in stocks, bonds, etc., etc., is, right? Diversification is also crucial in terms of currencies. Now, meaning that you don't just get yourself exposed in the Malaysian ringgit, 
uh, but make sure you do own a bit of other currencies as well, uh, like Sing dollar, right? Right now it's 3.43, a bit of US dollars and a Chinese yuan or what not. Okay, so this is to balance your overall portfolio and reduce the losses uh, if you're overexposed to the Malaysian ringgit. So next up, what else can we do? Yeah, this is an interesting tweet by one of the netizens over here, which is why I decided to take a screenshot of it. Uh, we should take the hit in our currency short term to spur domestic growth. Uh, because first of all, a weaker ringgit makes our destination more attractive, makes Malaysia, the tourist industry, uh, more attractive for foreigners. Okay? Therefore, it will boost GDP growth. Next up, we should also use this opportunity to spur exports. A more attractive ringgit also means cheaper goods or commodities, yeah, local goods, commodities. Huh? We need to increase our manufacturing production and indirectly increase job opportunities. So these two right here are crucial to ensure Malaysia's economy continues to grow. Okay? So currencies fluctuate. Yeah, that's uh, very unpredictable. It's due to macro factors. Uh, as I've mentioned just now already, uh, the reasons why we are seeing the ringgit's weakness, right? Yeah, US Federal Reserve, China's economic slump, yada, yada, yada. The weaker economy is much more stickier. So therefore, politicians, they need to focus and fix the economy first. Okay, so that's pretty much it about the uh, Malaysian ringgit and all that jazz, okay? Let's shift gears and right now, talk about the recent Do It Now QR code fiasco. Yeah, people have been receiving emails from RHB Bank <laughs> saying that, hey, right now from 1st November 2023, we're going to charge you 0.25% of your transaction value or double the amount 0.5% if you're using a uh, credit card to make payments and that got quite a lot of people mad uh, just to quickly clarify over here and to ease some of your worries there are two types of fees okay so first of all is the merchant discount rate yeah, short for MDR uh, it is charged only to merchants receiving payments now, this is 0.25% fee for QR payments made from current savings accounts or e-wallets. And next up, double the fee, 0.5%. I think this one was previously implemented also. Uh, this one's for credit cards yeah, on QR payments. And this fee structure itself is not fixed. Huh? Uh, for instance, uh, CIMB, Public Bank, Hong Leong Bank, May Bank, yeah, these four banks, are. Huh, they have already clarified and announced that uh, these fees will be waived indefinitely. Okay, uh, at least this fee, like credit card, I think is still there. Uh, RHB Bank, meanwhile, is planning to implement this fee in November. So yeah, RHB Bank is a bit stingy uh, at this point. Uh, next up is the 50 cent transaction fee. Okay, this is for peer-to-peer -peer transactions and personal transfers only. And it only affects balances above 5,000 ringgit. Yeah, businesses will not be affected. Uh. So you will not be charged with MDR fee and this 50 cent transaction fee at the same time. So I'll give you an example. If you're a merchant, you're receiving payments, right? Immediately, you'll be charged these rates. Okay, but then again, these banks over here, they're planning to waive it completely. So it most likely won't affect you, lah, okay? Except if you're using RHB Bank. Uh, next up, if you are doing a personal transfer below 5,000 ringgit or equal to 5,000 ringgit, that's entirely fine. Uh, no fees incurred. But if it's above 5,000 ringgit, I think this one was previously implemented or so. Uh, that's a 50 cent charge, lah, okay? So hopefully that clarifies uh, some of your doubts. Uh. It's not like all personal users will suddenly get a 0.25% fee. Okay, that's that's not the case, all right? So yeah, another topic. This one is about the HRD Corp. Uh, free courses, guys. Over 1,800 free courses. Yeah, this week itself, I just decided to do a, a Google search, free courses online. And the first match came in this one, uh, eLatte. This one's from HRD Corp. And you guys go and check it out yourself, lah, okay? Uh, register an account, only took me one to two minutes, completely free. And they offer so many courses, guys. See, social media marketing, for those who are not so good on English, understanding English. Mandarin, yeah, if you want to learn to speak Mandarin with me, also can. Uh, time management, copywriting, yeah, all that things, lah, okay? Uh, so on Tuesday itself, I sat for their copywriting course. It lasted for an hour. Uh, it's very worth it lah, for a free course. Okay guys, I'll see you guys in the next session. Good night. Bye.